cataractcoach.com, do not aim for Plano in these ultra-myopic patients. Customized spectacles required for such a high degree of myopia. So here's a cataract surgeon, a very myopic guy, and the first giveaway is, look how big the white to white is compared to the fixation ring. So the fixation ring has a diameter of 13 millimeters, and this cornea fills that completely. So you're looking at a white to white measurement of about 13 millimeters across. That's a big cornea, this is a big eye. Axial length is well over 30 millimeters. And we're doing our capsular axis. Remember, we need to measure the capsular axis. Do not use the iris as a guide. Because the anterior chamber and anterior segment is so large, you'll make too large of a capsular axis if you just use the pupil margin as your guide. So instead, use these forceps or something similar to be able to measure to create that 5 to maybe 5.5 millimeter axis. And you can see with the marks on my forcep, these are just about perfectly round and at 5 millimeters. There you go, look, 5 millimeters, exactly. That's what we want. So to remove the cataract, we'll do some hydrodissection. We're going to use a chop technique, which is kind of my go-to. Now you'll notice here from the video that the incision has been placed at the patient's steep axis, which is, uh, with the rule, maybe a little bit oblique, and looks like a steep axis of around uh, maybe 75 degrees. So lens nucleus here is hydrodissected, then rotated. There's the rexus. You can see it looks very nice. A little extra viscoelastic to protect the central corneal endothelium. Adjusting the lid speculum to give my, give my uh, phaco pro better access. I get incisions at about 75 degrees steep meridian. Go inside the eye. Here's the phaco chop. High vacuum, high flow. Chop that nucleus in half here, two halves. And I want to bring the halves up out of the capsule bag. A little bit easier to emulsify them. Certainly, it's a very deep anterior chamber, probably four millimeters deep. Plenty of working room. And we can get the other half of the nucleus bringing up. And then just use phaco power modulations, high vacuum, high flow and just give a bare minimum amount of energy to phaco aspirate the nucleus. That looks great. Now at the very end here, there's one last piece of nucleus. Any of the cortex that's remaining or epinucleus, we'll just get that out with the IA probe. We can try a little bit here and maybe get out some of the epinuclear shell, but if there's any, if there's any doubts, it's just easier to do it with the IA probe. So let's just switch over to that now. We've already covered in previous topics, previous videos, about the reverse pupillary block that happens commonly in these ultramyopic eyes. So be cognizant of that. If you do get the reverse pupillary block, remember just to tent up the iris to equilibrate the pressure between the anterior chamber and posterior chamber. And so here's cortex removal. Things going great. Now let's talk about the lens power. It's gonna be a three-piece IOL, monofocal lens. This IOL is not available in a torque power, so that's why we're gonna operate on the steep axis here. And we're not going to make this eye plano. First, there's some uncertainty in the lens calculations, less accurate in these highly myopic eyes. And the other reason is these patients are used to a good degree of myopia. So in the case presented here, this patient is functionally monocular because of other issues that happen in the other eye. And so with this good eye, the patient tends to mostly use a cell phone and using the cell phone at a very close range. The patient tends to hold the cell phone just a, a few inches or maybe a dozen or 15 centimeters from the eye. So relatively close to the eye. So to give that type of focal point, we want to aim significantly myopic. And in this case, we're actually aiming for the patient to be about a minus 5 to minus 6 diopter range of myopia. Now, it sounds like a lot for someone like you or me, but for a monocular patient who has some underlying macular issues and has a previous best corrected acuity of only in the 20 out of 50 range, it's useful to have that added near benefit given the patient's lifestyle. This patient doesn't drive, but primarily spends a lot of time using tablets as well as phones. So there's the IOL, dialed in the capsule bag, that looks great. And we can see there's a nice centration and then good overlap of the capsule rexus. Given the variability in the patient's lens calculations, even using the most modern methods, there is gonna be some variable. Um, outcomes. 
Here's making a paired incision, still at the 75 degree steep axis, opposite the main incision. So by having these two paired incisions, we're going to be able to flatten this one meridian by about a diopter. And that's going to help the patient achieve a nice spherical outcome. And so in this patient, we did achieve our desired goal. The patient ended up about minus 5.5 diopters spherical after about a month of healing. And the patient found that very useful for all the prolonged near work that's being done on tablets and um, cell phones. And again, keep in mind the patient is functionally monocular, and so there's no worries about having binocular vision at such a close range with uh, the moderate degree of myopia left over. But the key here is this patient, after long discussions, I was confident would not be happy at a plano or close to plano outcome. And for that reason, we targeted this minus 5 to minus 6 range. It's a huge improvement. The patient was more than 30 diopters of myopia before surgery. And so the patient's very happy. Now, what's the most important thing in the post-op period? Of course, that's examining the retinal periphery. We have to make sure this patient doesn't develop a retinal break or detachment in the post-op period. And this patient's going to need prolonged retina follow-up on a routine basis for the rest of life. So very important to emphasize that point to the patient. So interesting case, and remember, for ultra-high myop, don't aim for Plano.